Do you down? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Cepatini. I am a multi-sensory artist, and I am offering safe, colorful spaces for our self-discovery, connection, and enjoyment. So happy to have you all here. I'm wondering, with a show of hands, who has been here at one of our previous... Um, okay. Okay, Val, you were here last month when we did the Amplify Your Light, and um, we amplified our gifts. Um, well, we're excited today to be introducing you to this band of uplifters that we are. We're all wanting to guide you through um, amplifying each other's light to launch a paid offering. And in addition to that, so many other benefits. All of us have so much to offer. And I know that if you're here, you do as well. And maybe that's something you're yearning to do is to bring your gifts forward to create a livelihood for yourself. So I, the first thing I'm going to do is introduce you to the members of the team who each of us have a special role. And during our um, presentations, we switch roles so that each of us get experience in the different areas. And you know, if you're wanting to do presentations, then and you're part of the group, you'll also have an opportunity to share as well. Um, so, uh, and then after I introduce you, we're going to be doing a, I call it a multi-sensory arts moving meditation, just to ground and center ourselves. And then Kara, who I'll introduce first, she's actually spotlighted for me anyway. Um, Kara is our visionary for this course, for this prototyping course, she's going to uh, be teaching us today about the prototyping mindset, which has really changed so many things for me. It's so powerful, and I'm excited that she'll be presenting it. She'll also be presenting to us today why it's important for us to make that step forward in, in launching an, a paid offering. You know, even if it's not a high end program, just once you know, something that we're offering out into the world and she'll explain all that to us. So Kara is a graphics uh, artist and a facilitator. She's an uh, integral part of the Hague Center who is hosting our program. And when she speaks to you, she'll tell you a little bit more about herself. And then we have Nancy, if we could spotlight Nancy. Nancy is a... Um, nurse entrepreneur, and she assists and supports other nurses in coming into the full stewardship of their gifts. And um, Nancy is a beautiful spoken word poet and orator, and I, I, I could go on about every member of our team, but we only have a little bit of time. So as you get to know them, you'll see how amazing everyone is, and you'll get to display your own amazingness. We have Catherine Frazzi, who it, Reverend Alana Catherine Frazzi, or Catherine Alana Frazzi. <laughs> okay, let me take a breath. Um, who's here? She's helping with tech today, and she um, is an uplifter, a planetary healer for 30 years, and her mission is to raise the consciousness of love on our planet. And then we have Sasha's on our team, who is will be joining us and Marta as well. And we're gonna each put just a little burb about each of ourselves in the chat for you and then provide um, a link that you can go and learn more about each of us so that you'll know who's going to be facilitating you through the program. So, okay. So without any further ado, I will um, invite you into a Deep grounding meditation. If you'd like to stand, I would invite you to do so. You can also do this from your chair or from your bed or from wherever you are. So if you just want to follow along to whatever extent you'd like to, I would just kind of rock back and forth on your feet for a moment and then plant your feet firmly on the ground. Feel yourself like you're a tree and your roots are coming out of the bottom of your feet, really bringing you down into the earth to have that powerful mother earth energy enter into your body through the bottoms of your feet and have them enter in and bring it up to your hips and then just kind of wiggle your hips a little bit. 
letting that energy fill your body, your spinal cord, just kind of give your hips a little swirl and then hold them still grounded, steady, still with a strong sense of belongingness. And then bring that energy up your spinal cord and into your brain. And then if you just wanna put your hands and give energy right to your brain, imagining your right and left brain hemisphere fully lit up and integrated, balancing your masculine and your feminine energies, your ability to be imaginative and creative and your ability to manifest those creative dreams into the world through the masculine energy. And then bringing the energy up, opening the crown through mind, through soul, through our higher source, through creator energy, the power of love. Just breathing that in deeply and then bringing that back down from creator source, through higher source, through soul, through mind, back to the brain. And now with our eyes, just moving our eyes all the way up with our eyes closed, just stretching the muscles of our eyes up towards the heavens and then down deep into the earth and then stretching our eye muscles up and down again, and then to each side, really feeling yourself stretch your eye muscles. And bringing that energy from the brain down into the heart, down into the hips, and back down into the earth. And as we continue to breathe from the earth up into the heavens and from the heavens down through our bodies back into the earth, having that beautiful exchange of energy. And if you'd like to just sit down and with your hands either on your heart or in prayer position, I invite you to imagine a world where everyone is encouraged to embrace their true selves. To embrace their true selves and to share their gifts. When sharing our gifts with the world and inviting you to be part of this community where we're creating this harmonious ecosystem of collaboration Today being a very auspicious and special day, the 8th of August, it is a time where we can really anchor in and have strength in what we want to manifest. So as we experience this community, this unity, we uplift one another, we inspire innovation, we create endless possibilities, and we play in the field together. And in so doing, we create a community that really thrives, that really um, brings people into their passion, into their purpose, and into the joy of living with purpose. So bringing your attention back to the room, feeling very grounded, feeling solid, having let go of all the other distractions so that we can turn our attention to Kara, who so beautifully prepared for us a presentation on a prototyping mindset. Thank you, Kara. Great, oh, thank you so much. Lisa, I really love that in the, that grounding meditation, you brought the, uh, the masculine and the feminine energies together because that's kind of what we're doing today. So the last two workshops we've offered have been very feminine and um, visioning and artful and then this one we're showcasing well where's this what's the structure that's going to help to um help us walk through this course so we we our foundations and grounding are in the feminine our our visions in the feminine and then the masculine is going to help us take those uh those steps and that's where this prototyping mindset really helps us put one foot in front of the other so thanks lisa good yeah so i'm really excited uh, today to share this prototyping uh, mindset with us in a workshop format so it's the the concepts are very quite simple there's um you know it's very it's straightforward but the the juice is in the doing it uh, the valuing it um and the mindset shift that it creates by 
by going by going with it. So here we go. Okay. All right. How's that looking from the beginning? Great. All right. Here we are. Amplify each other's light. Uh, this is the third workshop in our series that's leading up to our big launch on October third. Susan's just coming. Hello, Susan. All right. Uh, so first, I just want to ground us a little bit in what do we mean by when we say prototyping, because it can mean uh, different things to different professions, in a sense. Um, and then we'll and then we'll check in together more what um, what's on our what's bubbling on our minds. Um, so what is it? It's it's a process. So I was I was an industrial designer. I was a I had a dream to be a, a toy designer, um, and I ended up at being a soap dispenser designer. Um, and so we would take, which was also still very fun, and we would make. Um, we'd have an idea for a product we're trying to make. We'd draw pictures. We'd think about what the user might want, and then we'd start building uh, little models of that little things out of scrappy foam and cardboard and paper. And because then you would just you would discover um, you, you thought in your drawing the door would look like this, but then when you build it in three dimensions, you go, oh oh gravity doesn't work like that. I thought oh I wasn't thinking, and then you and then you have to fix it. So you see you you ground truth your ideas in reality in very simple ways. So then and that make, helps you make a bunch of a bunch of decisions on a on a product as it's developing, and then you go forward. Um, and so it's this it's this process of taking lots of little trial and error steps to get to the big complex um solution so um so that's what this image is about um it's more of this it's more of this uh, squiggly back and forth path on your way to getting uh, to where you're going so you don't just you can't just think it all through in your mind and create this perfect oh, thing and then expect it to work it's just not how reality comes into into gravity um, so that when you take this more windy sort of smaller back and forth road it's more likely to get to success. Um, and so in the product design world, I would make these three, I'd make models in three dimensions and they would look all perfect on my screen. And then I'd have them printed out on little rapid prototypes. And then we'd find that, oh, that button actually clashes with that one. I can't believe I missed that on my model. Um, but we did, good thing we didn't spend $10,000 cutting steel on that part. Good thing we made a 2000 or like a $200 prototype. So it also reduces risk that way. Um, so, but in the business world, and we're more in the context of what we're doing here, it's, it's more about this, like this feedback cycle. So, um, and so it's like a, it's like that bicycle trying to get you, you steer a little bit each way, and you're not trying to launch a whole rocket ship to the moon because that's a way bigger chance of failure. Um, and so, in business processes, it's more about, it's more about um, talking, getting feedback from your audience, and talking to people, and trying trying at certain offerings and trying again and having business that fails and then starting over and that sort of thing. So when we, and then in the business world, they have the a thing called the, uh, the MVP, the, um, the least, the, 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 the simplest viable product. And so you say, what's the simplest thing we can make that doesn't have all the bells and whistles just to get enough to market that someone will pay for it. And then we can go from there and build it what people actually want and actually want to pay for. Um, um, but really what it is at its essence of what we're talking about with the prototyping mindset is this shifting from fear of failure to this continuous learning mindset. Say, oh, that didn't work. Okay, what's next? Okay, oh, that didn't work. Okay, what's next? So you're, you're failing early and often to, so that you can keep going. And so it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, no one came, this broke. It's, uh, I'm a failure. It doesn't mean you take it away from being using, oh, this is the, this is the process of learning. Of course, I'm failing a lot because that's what we do to, to be successful. So it's that, that mindset shift can be the difference between giving up and quitting and saying, oh, I guess I'm just a failure. No one showed up versus, okay, there's some, there's some feedback. What's my next step? And that can be, that can be all the difference between you thriving or just, um, or not. Okay. So let's talk to each other. Um, so the, the workshop's going to have four steps. So the, First step is um, pick a project that you're working on. Let's, we're going to do that step now. The second step is identify the next decision or decisions you need to make to gain clarity to move forward on that project. And then the third step is think of a prototype you can do to gain the clarity you need. Um, and then the fourth step is to share and learn that together. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to do the first step. Pick a project you're working on 
Um, so ideally it's some offering that you're thinking about launching or um, cause that's related to this course. Um, but if you don't have something like that, then it'd be something some other project in the six month time frame that you know you want to start achieving and something that's uh, that feels achievable to you so it's not a magical thing it's something you really want to work on and really want to do so let's just take a few minutes uh, take a moment to think about that and if you know already i just want to hear from one or two people what what project you're going to pick uh, for this workshop so you're picking it just for the purposes of this workshop um, so that you can think about some prototyping um, ideas for it so let's put gallery view Right. So who's feeling brave to go first? I can jump in. Hey. Um, hi. So I, um, I do uh, something called future weaving, and it's uh, connecting anybody into an uh, um, embodied imaginative journey and resonance experience of uh, future possibility that uh, they want to go to and um, one of the areas that I'm just starting now to explore is with um, young people age 17 to 23 and I did one this summer with my son because he's transitioning and I'm very interested in this age group that's transitioning from perhaps being in school or some phase of life and then going into their next uh, development where they're going to be bringing more of their gifts, talents, and strengths into the world. And my um, understanding in the work that I do is it's important to have three journeys to anchor and ground this resonance so that it has um, a, a, a good impact of change on somebody's reality. So I'm curious in this prototyping workshop to explore which content oriented uh, future possibilities those could be. So there you go. Okay, great. Thanks, Val. Where are you, Val, for everyone who doesn't know? Oh, yes, I'm in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Great. And you're pretty interested in joining the course here. I am. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so anyone else want to go? So we're just sharing. Um, the question is, it's also getting to know each other. But uh, the question is, what project are you coming with? Uh, to this potentially joining this course or to this at least this prototyping workshop saying so what um so for me the one i'm bringing is my adiwa course that i'd like to teach so i'd like to i'd like to put on an online course of six weeks or so to teach this uh, spiritual practice that i that i that i practice and so as we do this course i'm going to be doing it myself for that course to put it on into practice so i just wondering if anyone else would like to share Hi, I'm Carmela from Greece. Um, Carl is the only person in this group that I know. So, <laughs> hello. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, I've just moved to Greece about two and a half years ago. I spent the rest of my life before that in Johannes, well, in South Africa. I was born in Durban and then lived 20 years in Johannesburg. Um, so obviously, being born in apartheid era South Africa, there was the struggle against racism where I was dealing with racial inequality and healing around those kinds of issues. And then when I moved up to Johannesburg, um, started working with survivors of sexual violence um, and healing from those kinds of traumatic experiences. And... Um, Oh, by profession, I'm a teacher. Well, that's what I went to school for. And <laughs> but what I actually do for paid work at the moment is ghostwriting, but to the point of almost narrative therapeutics. And in the process of working with Cara through the Adiwa Ceremonies, World Unity Week, and 99 Days of Peace, I've developed a new healing modality called Playful Inner World Peace, where we reconnect with the joy of our childhood instead of, not instead of, but alongside healing from the trauma, we remember that there was joy, that there was play, that there were 
all of these things that we okay. allowed to fall by the wayside. And I want to find a way to bring all of these experiences together into one thing that I can devote my energy to in a way that feels like it's more than just keeping a roof over my head and food on the table. I want to be able to thrive in the world while doing the work that I actually want to be doing. I don't want to be spending six hours a day trying to compromise my ethics with a client who doesn't value me and then like try and squeeze in two hours of the happy stuff, you know? Yeah, good, I, great. It's half past 11 at night here and this is when I'm giving myself time to do what actually brings me to life. That's right. Yes, you're in the right place. So wonderful. Thanks for being here late and committing to that. Super. Okay. Thanks, Carmela. Good. I'm gonna. We'll continue. So everyone has hold it in your heart what your piece is, just so we can get through the workshop. Other people let other people share at different points throughout, so that we all get a, a chance. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, screen share and just I'll say a few more points, and then we'll come to the the next point in the workshop. Okay, here. Okay, I just want to tell a few little stories about why uh, the prototyping mindset is important, um, which I've said a few things already. So it simplifies progress to small, simple steps. Decisions are made on real experiences and feedback. So you really, so we're, um, in this course, we, we've, um, we want we wanted to do this workshop, for example. So last week we put the workshop on to ourselves to get to practice and get feedback from each other to improve it, to, to bring it to you this week. So just a little, and that's just, and then we because of, oh wow, that technology worked. Oh yeah, that wasn't clear. And we got this real feedback from really doing it. And here we are doing it. So awesome. Right? <laughs> um, and it reduces risks and, incre and increases incomes sooner. So a big part of this course is that you've opened the door to money. So you say, um, yes, free offerings can be part of it, but the per but the purpose of this course is to help you set up and generate some income. It doesn't have to be a million dollars at first, just starting with the smallest amount that you're kind of comfortable with and that works for you and that you're able to achieve, if, even if it's just getting $20 for a workshop. And if that's the first $20 you've made doing what you love, then that's huge success. And then that builds to 40, to 60, to 80, to 100, to 300. And that was my story as well with my graphic recording my first graphic recording I was just doing it with my friends in a network and then someone said oh come along and I'll give you a book and I said oh great and so I didn't feel bad that it wasn't good because I was just getting a book there was I was just practicing and the next one I just did for a charity of someone I know I said well I, I, I they paid three hundred dollars and it wasn't the most beautiful thing but I did it and I was building my skill and my practice and my portfolio and then I built up and up to government clients who can pay a lot for one day so that's how the that's how the business model rolls and so that that commitment to doing something paid because often in these spiritual gifts these artistic gifts we want to give them for free because um, it feels so good and it's hard to put it out there for money and, and maybe not and maybe be rejected so it's like just making it as simple and easy and small to open the door to let money flow in um, and there we go um, and then we shift from fear to fear of failure to continuous learning as we already said good um, yeah, that's easy. Okay, so show that fear. Sometimes the fear just shows up as a resistance. I don't really feel like it. I'm not making time for it. Um, I, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I need to do five more courses on it, you know, but the, the message we want to get through here is like, when you'll be, you'll be ready when you're doing it. As you're doing it, you will become ready as so you go to um, offer the workshop write the piece they say ship your work that is one of those one of those um, catchphrases um, so that we so we are continuously learning and continuously doing small simple things that are fun and giving you energy and, and feedback so you know what to do okay so this is the second part of the workshop now so um, we want to identify the next decisions you need to gain clarity on. 
So I just want to show you what some of those potential decisions are going to be. So when we are going through the course, we're going to um, we're going to have a, this template. This is a prototype of the template. Um, so with the template will help you answer just the core questions. It'll have an order to it, but you'll sort of you'll have you'll kind of know, and then you'll kind of figure out the next one. And then that will help you figure out the next one and that will help you figure out the next one and then you'll sort of circle back and say ah now i'm more now i'm more clear on the who so it's sort of it, it's a, a bit of an order and a bit of a circle um so you want to say so the questions are so that we need clarity on it to create a, a paid offering is who do i serve and why so like what transformation will they experience that they're willing to pay for um so you have to it helps if you can to, to tune that down to what, what's their age and gender and profession or certain life circumstance that they have. I know our friend Marta here is doing something for professionals in burnout. So it's a, it's a life circumstance and it's very nice and specific. So it helps people feel attracted like, oh, that's me. That maybe that course is for me. Um, and then imagine and then help them imagine that shift from A to B. What's the shift that they're going to make from burnout to thriving and, and from uh, for our course, like from sort of giving your gifts and not feeling valued or being invisible to thriving and having a doing a career, ha having a career doing what you love. Um, so then the next question is what, what is it that I'll offer? I have big ideas, I have big visions, I've got lots of gifts, but what can I offer that someone can pay for? What will I, what will I offer? What will the, the, what will the, what kind of, what's the concept that we'll offer? So it'll, is it a product or service? Is it online or in person? Is it a group or individual? Is it a course, coaching or consulting? So these are kind of, these are the decisions we have to get clear on. So maybe you're clear on some of them, maybe you're not. Um, and so, and then the, and then it's the more detailed level of how how will I deliver the offering? Is it a six week course? Is it a master class? Is it at store? Um, is it am I going to launch it on this date? Like what's the launch date? Is that relevant question for you right now? And then how much will I charge? That's, a, that's another question to get clarity on. So if you don't know any of them, that's okay. You just start uh, at anyone that you want and start and do some prototyping to get to get more clear. So this is time for you to decide, okay, if the, of the project I just identified in the previous step, what's the next decision I'd like to gain clarity on? So let's just take a moment to think about that. Okay, so um, yeah, so we'll give examples of prototyping in the third step. So I'm sort of doing talking workshop, talking workshops, so or giving you each step as you need it. So, um, uh, so the the question here is just what do I want to get clarity on? Not how am I going to get clarity or how am I going to prototype? So we're just trying to say which decision. That's all. It's a very simple task. So for me, with my Adiva course, I will need to decide uh, the launch date and um, and if I'm going to be able to connect it with humanity's team as a as a channel, like where I can offer it within, so that's um, that's my that's the decision I need to gain clarity on because I don't know that yet. So it's that simple. That's the, that's the type of level of answer that we're looking for at this stage. Just what is the thing I want to get clear on? So I'm going to go to gallery view and see if anyone who hasn't gone yet was has, has wants to share their answer for that. So the options are the ones that I just gave of like the who I serve, what tra ex what transformation they'll have, what the offer is, how I'll deliver it, and how much I'll charge. So those are some of the options. Who's got clarity on that? Carmel and Val have already gone. So Susan and Jin Yun, I'm kind of looking at you. If you want to, you're feeling brave. Um, if, if Susan doesn't want to go, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, so hi, I'm Chiyan. Um, so I was really grateful for the questions and thinking, who do I serve and why? And, and I guess um, 
the raising consciousness is why and really everyone is invited from an old um, worldview or paradigm to an emerging new but also ancient mm -hmm. paradigm that includes the feminine divine through what I've developed as a curricula called circle consciousness and circle consciousness bridges science art and religious form so I, my background is in art and architecture um, art history so I was looking at forms or shapes and how they tell the story, but then also create a conceptual lens through which we view natural phenomena and one another. So I'm trying to shift the lens or that view through quantum mechanics as the smallest building blocks in the universe to um, this metamorphic shape shifting um, that happens to resonate with um, patterns like mandalas and Sri Yantri. So I'll just stop. Thanks. So you have a curriculum that you've developed? Yes. Okay. And you know who you're offering it to or in what kind of way? Yeah, I've taught it to, um, so before, so I taught it since 2007 to elementary school students because that's where my oh. kids went to school and I had I learned a lot from the experience of teaching to students, to younger students, because they're more open, whereas the older mm -hmm. people, like, that's not possible, that's mysticism, or that's this, or that's that, and and then I just waited till 2020, to, you know, 2020, and suddenly we had COVID, and the world changed, and quantum mechanics, and quantum physics changed, and I said, no, actually, all that mystical woo-woo is actually quantum physics, so mm -hmm. biophysics, so I've just been trying to keep up with the discoveries around, um, you know, DNA and cells and genes and all that, uh, which is a lot of not uh, out of my wheelhouse, but I'm pretty confident because I tested it out in a few places. So I, I think it's good. good. So are you looking for a way to bring that to like a bigger course to a bigger audience? Yeah. So I just um, today, happy 8-8 eight, eight, everybody and thank you. Um, I just had a synchronous thing where our old babysitter introduced me to a videographer filmmaker and he videotapes courses like teaching courses in Asia so and um, Brazil so he just interviewed me for two hours and he's going to come up with a little video thing and I'll work with the video thing I guess to um, try to entice or invite communicate um, and then yeah, this is perfect. It's really synchronous how it's helping to make real that it's just grounding, right? Thickening, making more dense, being with you all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, let's all just hold that. <laughs> let's hold that energy of like of the big concept, good big conceptual ideas that raise consciousness and bringing them down into a way that's going to serve many people. And that we're going to thrive as we do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's holding that together. For everyone and plants and animals, minerals, bacteria, fungi too, the whole, the whole of a live agent, like a live consciousness on Gaia, Panchamama, in all space time dimensions, including dreams. Aho, 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 aho. Wonderful. Okay, great. Good. So hopefully you'll be able to tune into one one of the questions that you want to get more clarity on in, in the next um, section. I think you'll have it. I think you just had a lot, a uh, lot to express. So I think it'll be just fine. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to continue and then just so we can keep going with the workshop and then we'll have the next um, next more people share as we go. Here, how? Okay, so the how part. Okay, so what is this prototyping? What are how would we do it? What are some examples? Um, so the process is pretty simple. One to four here. I identify a decision you need to make. Um, so even that is quite powerful because you're like, well, what you know? What's the what's the pro, what's the pro, linear the linear ish process that I'm going through to launch my offering? And then just getting clear. Okay, what decision is it that I actually need to make? That's actually a big 
step and that's this course and that and the template that we're building it will help you give you that give you that structure and then number two is think of a simple even fun uh, step that can help you get clarity and real life feedback and practice on on that to help you make that decision um, so for example um, so we're for us we're launching this launch your offering and these doing these workshops with you is really fun and energizing and preparing them together is fun and energizing um, and like uh, little challenges as well but like overall it's just really great and then we're getting this real life feedback of how it feels and how it goes it and how to, and building it as and helping us build the content um, as well so that's and a, so that's a good example of that and then um, number th step three is do that simple task. First you think of it, <laughs> then you have to actually do it. And that can be harder, easier said than done, right? Um, ask for feedback and receive the feedback with gratitude and openness. So that's easily said as well. Let's say when someone, when we get feedback that says, mm, like this could have been better, that can, woo, that can be hard um, to take, or you sort of bounce it back at them. Oh no, that wasn't what I meant. Or oh, blah, 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 blah. but it's like, well, thank you, thank you for that feedback, and just practicing letting it come in and not being afraid of the feedback itself. I know for me personally, um, when I don't think I've done a good job, I don't ask the client for feedback because I don't want to hear the bad, the negative feedback that I assume is happening. Now, if I actually ask for the feedback, it's usually usually actually helps me feel better because they say all the they say how much they loved it and enjoyed it. And if I say, oh, but what about that thing that went wrong? They said, oh, don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. Or for me, it felt huge. Like I can't believe I said that or did that thing. You know, so um, um, so that process of it's a it's a courage and a sort of maturing to be that and and a mindset. This is okay. Feedback is my friend. Um, you know, nobody showing up to my uh, course today is feedback that you know something about the communication is off doesn't mean I'm bad or my thing isn't worthy in the world it means something I means I need to review what I did and and do something more and, and different next time and then uh, four reflect on the feedback and make changes in the next iteration and try out um, so here's some examples um, so say you're on the who question you could interview three people who um, who you th who seem to be in about your target audience now, probably people close to you or you work with who would just like to have a nice conversation with you. Say, hey, I'm thinking about putting on this. Um, this is what I want to do in the world. I'm thinking of putting on this type of offering. Um, if you, I see you as someone who could benefit from this. What um, would do you, do you think it would benefit you? What do you think? What would really shift? What would you really like to shift in this? Or what is the pain point? What's difficult for you now? And how could do you think this offering could help you shift that into a new state or something like that? Those types of questions, and then and saying, and would you be willing to pay for that? How much would you be willing to pay for that? What would you be willing to pay for? So those kinds of questions with someone you trust and loves you, you know that, and they can be honest with you. Um, and so we did that. And so there were six of us. So each of us really only did two or three because it takes energy and effort. But together we got, you know, we got a whole bunch of feedback and, you know, you get different, slightly different feedback here and there. But overall, it gave us some consensus about, yeah, OK, here's how we want to keep it simple. Here's how we want to do the languaging. Um, we weren't some of us disagreed about which language was better. And the feedback showed us that a certain one worked and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then ask those people to refer you to two other people who might be interested in what you're thinking about offering and interview some of them. So that gives you, it gets the energy kind of hopping and it gets people interested in you and you're actually building relationships at the same time. Um, or maybe you would make a survey to a network that you're in and ask them what kind of services would be most useful for them. So that's at the what question. You're like, well, I want to do a coaching monthly group session. Would that be useful to you? Or would you, you know, or would you prefer an individual you know, master class, or you know, so try and think of a few concepts that would work for you, and then ask people which one did they would be most useful to them. And so that's I just bolded useful to them because you're trying, you want to give your gifts in a way that people are really getting a lot of value from, and that they are happy to pay you for that value, and you're happy to receive the money for that for giving that gift, so that it's a wonderful enlivening exchange. Um, so you could offer three workshops on three different ideas you have and see which one gets the most interest and which one you enjoy the most. Um, that's an important I, well that you enjoy the most because that energy of enjoyment is going to keep you going um, 
and it's going to come through in your work and people are going to feel that joy and that's very attractive to come and enjoy being with you to to get up to that joy that you have um, so include a feedback survey with events workshops ask people what attracted them to attend so because that 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 attraction is uh, going to be an important point what what words attracted them what concepts and people attracted them and that's what's going to make people stay and then um, offer a beta course where you where you offer a lower price as you develop the course together. So there's just a, those are just a few examples that they're a little bit towards this kind of online course um, um, modality, but I, often with the spiritual and artistic arts and trying to thrive at them, that tends to be a little bit of the way that we can do that. So, okay, so that's a lot of options. Um, and just relating them to some of the different questions as well. So different questions would have sort of different options, but you can just think pretty logically. You're like, okay, who do I know? What could be simple and fun? How could I practice that? What would, that could lead me to a next step? So just that kind of questioning in yourself. So here we are. Um, so think of a prototype you can do to gain the clarity you need on the question that you thought of earlier. Um, so for example, with my Adiwa workshop, I wanted to know the launch date and the pricing. Um, and then as I asked myself this question in preparing for this workshop, I thought, oh yeah, I should, I should talk to the people at Humanities team and see what the process is and the pricing is and how they do it. And like, would there be a time when it would be best for them that for me to launch it, then that might help me make a bunch of decisions because they have a channel, they have a channel of people who sign up for courses. So if I can connect with them, which I have a personal connection started, um, then I could, if I could connect with that person individually, then that's easy and fun for me. And then would answer a lot of questions as well. So I'm like, hey, this process works. <laughs> so sometimes it's just as simple as that's kind of a research question asking, um, could even just be looking something up online can often just get you an answer as well. Okay, uh, so back to gallery view. How are we doing for time? 45 minutes, okay. Um, so now we're planning to go into breakouts of two, which we will do, and so that you can work on this together. So you can share together a little bit what the project is and what the question is, and then think through together, brainstorm together what those prototyping ideas could be. Okay, so we've got Two, two to three participants per room. We've got 10 minutes to, well, a little less than, oh, 10 minutes to me to 11 o'clock already, dang it. <laughs> okay, um, so you have, um, you're only gonna have five minutes, sorry. So we've got to, um, so I tried to talk less. Well, um, um, yeah, to, 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 so you might have to just focus in on your prototyping ideas a little bit. So off we go. Okay, uh, good. Open all rooms. Um, Marta, if you want to stay behind, you can be with us here. Yeah. Okay, oh, Nancy's staying behind, so Marta can go. Okay. Okay. Catherine Fossey. Catherine, are you having trouble in room two? Okay. Okay, um, so let's do
Mm. Oh, great. Oh, come on, Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence. Okay, yeah, so if I think about my prototyping for my Dewa course, I haven't talked to them yet, so because I was getting ready for this workshop. Um, that really is my next step, though. Let's see, what other questions do I need to answer? price uh, so how could i yeah well, i think talking to the ship people will help me with the price the date i know i want it to be six weeks i know how pretty much what the content is i guess i could get feedback about the six weeks i'm assuming the six weeks once a week model is the best for me but i think i could talk to people um who might be interested in my course like carmilla who's here or susan who's in the bridging continents group i could interview them about what uh, format and date and time would work for them i think that's a good idea because they've already shown interest and want to build it with me um, and so that would also help me get more connected to them and um and start that energy flowing between us so we could really we could start co-creating more as we explore those questions together so yeah thanks prototyping mindset all right let's see how people are doing i'm gonna pop into a room here i'm gonna pop in with val and sasha mm -hmm. I'm going to stay here just in case. Broadcast message. Yes. Okay. okay. I need to. I could have paused the recording.
Okay. Very good. <laughs> okay, great. Welcome back. Uh, we are we made the um, agreement together that we would do these one hour workshops and we would stick to the time. So I'm, I am hope we can stick to the time. Okay, so I'd love to hear from one or two people. I'm sorry the time was short. I was trying to speak less. So let's hear some examples. Suzanne, okay, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, just very quickly, I uh, got a very clear answer about uh, direction and confusion. I had about two demographic groups and I identified very clearly two opportunities to be able to test out e each one and find the joyful vibe. So thank you very much. Good. Can you tell me just what you would do? What you would do? Yes. Well, I would be offering a future weaving um, workshop, well, workshop opportunity to try those journeys with a group of women. And then Danalia has offered me a possible connection to connect with her youth that are exploring her nature. And so I would try that and see which one had the highest frequency and get the next information step after that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Kathy. I can say something. Yeah. Um, so I was in with Susan and I got I was able to I wanted I was telling her I want I would like to launch um something regarding energy for people to understand energy and so they can connect, but also because I wanted and I read her something from Sarah McCrum's book love money, money loves you. And because money is the consciousness. And uh, I realized that she realized it was like, oh, wow, that's, I never thought of it this way, you know? And probably a lot of people don't think of it that way because when I was younger, we were a working class family and it was always very never enough, never this, never that. And it's just really having a different mindset. And then I, Today is Lionsgate and I was out and about. And of course I'm telling everybody like that I run into, I don't know anybody and, they, and they're like, what's Lionsgate? And I'm explaining all this energy stuff there. And, and it was like, everybody's going, oh my God, oh my God. And, and I also was, was they're like, I go, it's great. It's great. You're gonna, it, you're gonna, it's gonna love it. And then I was also telling some other people about the ener just energy and this one guy, he was younger. He went, you mean, do you mean your third eye? And I go, yeah, but do you know about chakras? He goes, no. And I go, well, you have more than just, you know, the <laughs> so third like, eye, you know, know. And, and, but I got clarity on the fact that maybe, maybe for me, I'm, I'm wanting to be in fifth dimension and teach people everything about that. But maybe the universe might be telling me the younger people coming up that don't know these things, because I have a lot of modalities that I could teach people, but maybe I have to start with just the chakra system, you so know? So simple. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So thank you. That was great getting some clarity today. Thank you so much. Okay. Suzanne. <laughs> well, so I, I was speaking with Catherine that I have so many things that I could teach and modalities that I know. Um, and she told me, I, I'm not sure what project I should work on right now, but she told me to go into my heart center and um, figure out what is my real passion right now. So that was a really good advice for me because I just, I just recently retired from a corporate job. And so, and I'm, I have been doing healing work with people, you know, I'm a the therapist, the neuro, neuro programmer, et cetera, et cetera. And I have been teaching a little, you know, little by little, but, you know, not in a big way. And also thinking about in a bigger way, you know, I haven't had a chance to really think about that yet. So um, it's nice to be with all of you to start thinking about that. So I thank you. Great, great. So getting clarity on the concept right now is yeah. where you're at. So that's great. That's a great place to be. And I love that. Um, I love that advice by Catherine, who that can almost kind of a form of prototyping as, as going inside and getting those deeper answers that there's there's all you're thinking about here, but then there's kind of this deeper knowing um, that you actually have to go and interview yourself <laughs> and do that process. And it's nice if someone's holding you in that space, it makes a big difference. And 
we also would do in our group, we would kind of interview our future self and have that person sort of speak to us from the future. And I remember getting really beautiful answers from that that I don't think I would have thought of with just journaling. And so we'll do some of these practices as we go. So and hold the space for each other. So oh, okay. So that's the end of our prototyping workshop. If you can uh, stay with us for five more minutes, I just Nancy wants to show you a bit, a little bit about the course, uh, real quickly, and then we'll stay on longer. We'll finish. We'll finish, and then we'll um, then we'll stay on for any questions people have about registering for the course in October. We can show the website a bit more. Nancy, are you ready to share? Yeah, and also. Um... It was, it was my task and my honor to do some deep listening during today's conversation. And so a couple of things really hit me. Um, I what, what was really a strong theme was how many people really wanted to go to, to work with youth. That came up a lot. So I feel like there's a there's kind of a commonality that a lot of us are getting a sense of, you know, that that we are the teachers that we've been waiting for. And that you know our students are showing up for us, and the other um, great words that came up were, were wondering, emerging, healing, joy, play, and really like how do we bring life and love to what we're doing? So I love that that's really kind of what was 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 part a big part of our conversation. So Lisa, can you just um, yeah. share the screen? I'm just going to quick quick like a bunny run through the course. Um, so that people have a have a chance to see. So I think I know some. I know uh, several of you have been on these calls before. So it's it's just a review. And I, I I'm gonna I'm, I'm actually just gonna review the course from the point of view of myself. You know I have been wanting to be uh, to launch some kind of paid offering for a very long time. Um, so maybe you can relate to that. It feels like a lot of us here are, are of a certain age and have a big long background in something else. I was a nurse for 33 years and I'd really love to bring something to the world, kind of like what Carmela said, you know, what brings me life and how do I get paid for doing something I really love? So um, this, you know, the way the course is outlined, I just want to talk about how it speaks to me. Um, I know, I know the first, the first month, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk minus the slides. The first month, oh, is, excuse me, Nancy, I'm sorry, I'm definitely having a technical. Uh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. The first, the first month is getting to know each other. So we're going to like really um, do this in community. And that's very important to me to get that level of support. There'll be a lot of opportunity to kind of work with one another. The six of us who are holding the space for this are thinking about other opportunities where we can meet. So it's not just the teaching court, it's not just the teaching time, which will be once a month and the group coaching, which will be once a month, but all of the ways in between that we can stay connected and support each other and learn from each other. So, um, and then, uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to continue to talk about money. Um, we're actually going to do some calls around that. We're going to continue to talk about prototyping. Month two is just, you know, for me, I, I like many of you, I, I, I saw, you know, Val wrote, do I work with women? Do I work with kids? You know, I, I know I want to work with nurses, but I feel like I really want to work with nurse managers, nurse leaders, like who defining the audience and really kind of completing that template, like having instruction, which is what something I really need. Like I need the black and white. How am I going to do this? Month three, you can go ahead to month three. Month three is reaching your audience. Again, I love that what's what's um, highlighted here is fun, making this really fun, making it creative, learning how to say, learning how to use our voice. That came up a lot today in our shares. How do we say what we really want to say? Creating an online presence. You know, how how are we able to ask for money? How are we able to step into our value? That's something that's really like I see that as like who's my audience and how who am how am I there to, to, to use my gifts so that I'm valued and can get the value I deserve and, you know, get the value that I feel I deserve to offer you what it is I want to bring to you. Um, what's, what's the next one? And then, um, yeah, it looks like registration page, month floor, get, getting the clients, making the offering. And then month five, the launch, you know, and I'm excited for this. I feel really nervous about this. I really haven't done a lot of this work myself because I've been very like resistant myself. I love, I love supporting others, but I'm going to need your support for me to step into my launch as well. Lots of coaching. 
Um, and then, of course, month six is the reflections on how, how we've done and celebrating, which I'm learning now. Um, celebration is key to continued momentum. If you can't celebrate the little steps, it's very hard to move forward. So, you know, we're definitely going to support that process. And um, I want to say uh, registration is open, right, Kara? There's a way to go ahead and, and do that. And there'll be there'll be more information. I'm I'm putting I'm saying this, and I just need a, a nod from the um, the people that are more technologically savvy than I am. Good, there it is. Okay, the cost is 600 euros. And there'll be more information on the website, correct? If people have questions, they can stay right now. And also the website will be enhanced as, as more things develop. I'm assuming that that's true, correct, Lisa and Kara? Yes. The, yes. yes. Okay. And you can always reach out to any of us. Um, I mean, I think many of us, um, many of you know at least, at, at least one person, but you're free to, to contact any, any of us for any questions or any connection that you need, any support that you need. Yeah, there's one little thing awkward there in the register. You you fill in the your name and email and hit register and it says, thanks, you've registered. And then you're still there. And then you have to go and click the yellow pay button. So it's just, I'm just working on that to get it to flow a little better. So, that's, so it's just two, there's two steps. So, but we'll follow up with you if you don't pay. <laughs> and if you have any, um, difficulty paying or doing signing up, just reach out to us because we're prototyping this as well. And we're it's there's a big learning curve here for all of us. And it's just so exciting. Thanks for staying the five minutes over. Mm. Can I ask a question? Is that are we in the Q&A section? So my immediate question is, what are the networks to which um, you all would be. So in other words, if I have something and I'm ready to launch it and go with it, um, someone said, oh, I'm gonna try it out on- um, Humanities uh, team. Yeah, so is that part of what happens in the coursework? Do we get, you know, mentored to sort of land the launch sites with people I, I think the thing the thing that for me intrigues me the most is that you'll have the Hague Center and that's a known entity and when when you're working with unknown you know outside of our local or our networks or our community it's really challenging to build up that credibility that takes time and effort and work and I just worked on my resume I'm just applying for things right now and I realize all of us have so much and then, but this is so nascent, everything we're doing. So mm. it, working with the, uh, the network that's already established-ish in this nascent realm feels like that would be worth the 600 euro. And otherwise that that's just sort of a very practical question on my part. Sorry if that's inappropriate. Perfect, <laughs> oh, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go ahead with that one, Nancy? Or did you have something? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so it was a very conscious decision of us to, to host this within the Hague Center and um, we're, um, I'm a core team of the Hague Center and we do a thing, um, a program every year called World Unity Week and there's a whole community around that and it's these types of people, these evolutionary leaders, these people um, getting together and saying how do we change the world together, getting to know each other, becoming friends. And then we're, you know, we're meeting weekly. Carmilla and I meet every Thursday morning um, as part of that, through that space that's just held for us. That's, we're holding for each other to say, like, you know, what's our next step? What's our next step? And then we're becoming friends. And then I'm offering something, and Carmilla says, I want to come to your program. I want to help you build it. And I go, oh, oh that's wonderful. <laughs> you know, we're just, um, so that space is, is definitely held there um, and Anne-Marie is quite a special, um, Anne-Marie Vorkova is the founder of the Hague Center and her real gift is this mesh weaving with all these evolutionary leaders all around the world um, and she has a really beautiful way of saying like, oh, what do you need? Oh, in connection with that person? Oh, sure, yeah, here, here you go. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not promising everyone the most, you know, the perfect connection or anything, but we have, the, um, we are well, well connected with the, the humanities team and the shift network 
um, and the Sea World Unity Week, which is part of Purpose Earth and the Sign Network. And the Sign Network does these things where you have to join them separately and pay to be a sign member. But they do these things where you go live on Facebook, and then they make that go live out on a hundred other sites at the same time. So then you feel like kind of expand your visibility in a, a kind of magical way with the with this spiritual sort of um, group of of audience. So yeah, so I'd say that's that's part of it it's not we haven't actually like talked about that as part of the value very much um but i'm uh, just becoming a bit clearer by talking about it as well and it's not like a promise like um, um you will have direct access to this network but it's like those po those possibilities and connections are there yeah Well, I really feel inspired right now. I it's been I love being in community with other women and hearing what everyone is bringing forward, and it just feels exciting, you know, that we're putting our talents and and really creating an uplift for one another. So thank you to all the women who participated today, and to all my amazing uh, team members, for the technology for the presentation for the deep listening. Um, if there aren't any more questions, and there is time for more questions if anyone has one, but I'm gonna be um, courageous and I'm gonna share the theme song that I've recorded for um, for this, I guess. Yeah, it's something I, the little the melody or the, the core of it I accessed in my spiritual work and then I've developed it into a little theme song recently inspired by by this um so i'm going to share that at the end and you can leave before or during if you need to <laughs> but it's just fun it's in its real baby stages and it's just part of that prototyping showing the imperfect sketches of songs and and all sorts of things um so any more questions and then we can go to that okay here we go all right, let's see how I can get this to go. Can you see it? Oh, make sure I, oh wait, I might not have hit sound, just a second. Make sure you always hit share sound when you share your screen on Zoom. All right.
unmute. Uh, my teacher said, he's like, oh, you can share it if you want. He said, if it'll bring you joy. Said, yeah, it brought me joy. Said, yeah, I could tell so it brought you so much, much joy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was fun. Thank you. Thanks for living in the vulnerable, sharing, and bringing forth that joy, Kara. Really a gift. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, let's flourish together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See you now. again. I think Thank we're going to do the next one. And next month will be about um, system, um, nervous system support. Nervous system. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's a great day. Lionsgate. Thanks, Lots Lionsgate. Good Happy Lionsgate. Happy Lionsgate. Woo! Happy